talked to him about the uncomfortableness of going into Britain's Got Talent in the early days. I'm talking about like second and third series, I think it was. <laughs> like, bro, that's dope. You're like 19, bro. Come on. Uh, I ain't got the kahunas to go on uh, to go on Britain's Got Talent. Yeah, to be fair, by that stage, I had, I had confidence. Maybe a little bit overly confident <laughs> at times. Um, Until it was cringeworthy confidence. Like, no. I mean, you always, you you're always going to cringe a little bit looking <laughs> at you. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to cringe a little bit. That? Yeah, yeah. Gross. But I mean, I, I, was, I, had a, I had a big personality, especially. I, was, I look back, I'm like, I was a young yeah. kid, but I was putting myself out there. Good. I was, I was trying things, I was nice. going for stuff. And, um, so over the course of time, you've kind of developed yeah, into, if, this, into this individual. Yeah, if I had yeah. a mentor when, when I was that age to, to sort of give me another perspective, mm. I believe I would have not dropped the ball twice on national TV oh, yeah, yeah. live in it was mental, 15 wasn't it? million people Jezza, watching. It was mental, bro. It was mental. Um, I because you've done that thousands of times. Well, this is the thing, I hadn't. I, uh huh. Yeah. Are you kidding? Me? I'd never done it. Oh what? That routine was me pushing myself live on the at the moment, like taking uh, it, it was to it was planned. Level. I knew the the routine. Okay. But I messed it up every time in rehearsals without fail. Really? Never got through it once. Now, any, anyone with a bit of experience would say... OK, let me allow that one. Just, just, just go 80%. OK. You need, statistically, yeah. you need to be nailing this far more than you're not. OK. Because when it comes... I, I was thinking, it'll be all right on the night. Really? That's under not, the, under that's the, not the mentality. The mentality is the Kobe Bryant mentality. Yes. Mamba mentality. Yeah. You're either prepared or you're not. Or you're not. I was are not prepared pre for that routine. Are you prepared to fail if you don't prepare? Yes. yes. My intentions were good. The, the, the spirit was good. Mm. Push yourself. Strive for more. Yeah. You know, try and be the best version you of yourself. You Excel. See, I love it, bro. Yeah. Good foundational yes. principles. You've got all of this stuff, but you haven't put the work in. It goes hand to hand. Yeah, I didn't know how to piece together those yeah. principles and apply it to also being realistic. Yeah. 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 Like, what do they say? Set smart goals. There you go. Um, what's the breakdown of Specific, smart? Specific. Specific. Measurable. Measurable. Achievable. Achievable. A realistic. Realistic. Time times. scale. Yes. So <laughs> I was not smart with it because, mm -hmm. like I said, every time in rehearsals I dropped the ball. Simon Cowell came in. You'd watch some of the rehearsals. I'm there dropping the ball, getting fuming, thinking, oh, wow. I'm better than this. But it'll and be all right. The more you're telling yourself that, is yeah. the more you're not relaxed because you've got to be in a relaxed state. Yeah. But I didn't mess up as badly as I did on the night. <laughs> that really? was definitely the worst. Really? Yeah, so the worst came when it really when mattered. You kept, really? But this is the mad thing. I love the but. For Isn't failure something we have to embrace? Preach it. This oh is, my God. And this is something for years. We're letting it break us. For years, I, I, I was unhappy with it. Really? It was hard so, to let it go? It was hard to let it go. Yeah, I For feel years, you. it's like, I wish I did better there. Yeah. But a few years ago, I switched it. Yeah. And if I could go back, sounds crazy, I wouldn't change it. See, see, see. I would see. let myself see, see. fail because the, bro. the gold bro. that I have drawn from the failure. You know what you've done that you don't even realise? You reframed the story, bro. Yeah. You've done the classic, the classic strategy of reframing the story yeah. that enabled you yourself to grow yeah. and become a better person with strength and wisdom. Yes. Because before, your initial thought was just failure yeah. and embarrassment and how could I? Yeah. And that's how people are going to see me. Yes. But when you reframed it, you actually started to feel like, what kind of... You know hundreds, what I'm hundreds. You start to feel like that, uh, like, uh, yeah, hundreds. I'm the man, I would have done this, I would have failed. Yes. We have to embrace failure. Yeah. Failure comes growth, bro. Uh, it's I'm a like, fertilizer. A hundred. Uh, I'm like you, right? We're winners. Yeah. It's in us. It's in yeah. our DNA, we can't change that. Yeah. That was that was yeah. we didn't have anything to do with our, our genetic makeup. You think so? 
<laughs> oh, we can get on to this. <laughs> but we, um, we hate failing. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. We hate failing until we learn to have a different mentality and perspective, mm. to see failure as not what we're aiming for, but if it comes, which it yeah. will, it's inevitable, yeah. Yeah. then we draw all the superpowers that can only be yeah. unlocked from failure. So it's not what happens, it's how we process what happens. Yes. Because the same thing could happen to the, the same p different people and you take it in one way and saw. Yeah. I take it in one way, you see me homeless on the streets, I'm a drug addict, mm. and, I'm, and what happened to you? Mm. Well, he just told me a story that the same thing happened to another guy I know, but that guy's flying. Yeah. That woman's flying. They're doing brilliant. Yeah. What are you doing here, bruv? What are you doing? Corner store, on the floor, drug store. What are you doing? Yeah. 100%. Reframe the story. Reframe the story. How you processed it. Let it be a superpower. So, so you told yourself that, that this was good for me? That you learned from it? What did you tell yourself? Absolutely. Well, I know now, it's, it's easy in retrospect, yeah. I know now the lessons that I've drawn from it. I remember at the time thinking, what good can come of this? Mm. I could have won the show. Yeah. I, I could have come second or third, or you know. But I didn't. Ooh. I went out in disgrace. Yeah. In, uh, what did if, you? What if, what, it, it wasn't. It felt like it disgrace felt to like me. It felt like disgrace. My standards, my, by my standards, I would... You know, I was disgraced. But I had people come up to me in the street saying, you know what, I loved your performance. You, you, you messed up, but, bruv, it don't matter. You, you went out there, you tried. Boom. Boom. And I learned some really valuable lessons. It was a TV show, right? Mm. Now, think about how much TV people consume mm. in, in the average day, week, month, year, yeah. in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. And how much of it is actually memorable. Mm -hmm. Now, it's only a few years after that I realised and learned that by me messing up what felt like a disgrace and a disaster, not only unlocked certain superpowers and knowledge that I just wouldn't get from always winning and always getting everything right, it also made my performance more memorable than nearly everybody who got further than me in the competition. Wow. So... Rewind that bit when you're playing it and listen to that again, yeah? So what I learned is what may feel mm. like a disaster in the moment and a bad thing, a negative thing, mm. just be patient, because you skip forward a few years mm. and I guarantee you some good will have come of it. 